It's time for another edition of Mace in Your Face. Now, along with college football immortality, Glenn Mason, here's Dan Barrera. All is right with the world. We got the Mace. Open back once again. It's a brand spanking new football season. Unfortunately, Mace, we need to break now because I went a little long with Alex Kendall. Oh, How do you feel about oh, that? Are you taking a break right <laughs> now? I take a break. Yeah, we just got it. Right. <laughs> now you're kidding, aren't you? I'm kidding. You're yeah. worse than college football. Yeah, I, mean, I am. That's true. Hey, I, I got to cut a couple things off. My sure. Chest, yeah, I, you've been really? waiting a long time. Thanks, Carrie uh, Limo, by the way, for whatever's coming no, next. Believe me, I've got pent up demand. Okay, first of all. <laughs> I had to wait out here. Alex Kennelly, you went way over, okay? And that yes. was great, great interview. Yes. <laughs> but you've uh, never asked to take a picture with me. And, is that true? Oh, yeah. And you said, let me escort you out. You don't think I ever did that with you either? Are you nuts? No. I mean, I said, are you, are you kidding? Well, Number two. Okay. I'm glad okay. you got that off Number your chest. two, uh, everybody's been asking me. <laughs> About the state fair. <laughs> oh, even people that I really care about, like you, you mentioned Carrie Lynn, Todd Anderson, okay? Yes, right. He called me up and he said, Coach, I will personally pick you up, Carrie Limo, and take you out there. I said, Todd, I haven't been invited. He said, I can't believe that they, uh, uh, Dan and his sidekick, Garzi, <laughs> just ripping you nonstop. Then I get a call from, uh, our old good friend, John Glenn, Molson yeah. Coors, Liney Kugel, and he said, hey, what day are you going to the fair? I want to go. I said, I haven't been invited. And he said, I can't believe it. Those guys rip you nonstop. And then I sit down and why Zeta people are asking me. And here's what really hurts. Okay. The number of times that I've invited you two to clowns to my house. And the boat. To the boat, yeah. To drinks in the Winston room, yeah. Are you not? And you don't come, yeah. And you badmouth me for not going to the fair, and I wasn't even invited. That's not right. I think you just answered your own question there because we've never been invited in the boat. We've never been invited to the Churchill room. Unlike how many how many people, Garzi, would you say in our business? I'd say have, almost everybody. Pretty much everybody but us. Yeah, they all have pictures. They all have selfies. Speaking of taunting, they taunt us with that. I just, I just invited Alex Kendall to come. I don't blame you. Yeah. So look, let's let's see if we can get some honesty out of you for a change. <laughs> if we had invited you, what would you have said? I would have come. No, you wouldn't have. I, I you, he would have come if we got you a ticket. One of Todd Anderson no, wasn't no, no. available. Got you a no, golf cart no, no, to go no, right to no, our booth. That's, that's not true. I I do ask for a car and where Todd takes care of me because I go there and you know the parking, but all this stuff what you were saying that I wanted a golf cart and, and I ticket. wanted ride tickets yeah, and, and food. free food. That's all. That's all baloney. You don't think that's true? Accurate? No, I would have. I would have come. Yeah, I don't. Know I like I... going out there. So it's been months. How long has it been since we had John? Six months? Eight months? Oh, Whatever boy. it's been. It's been a you long know, time. I, you know, I'm. Uh, I don't know if you notice. I'm. I'm a good. I got, you do look like you're in good shape. I had back surgery. Well, you and Lou, you beat Louis. In fact, oh, no. you're the you, Louis inspiration. I instri- yeah, uh, I I uh, I had been seeing uh, my friend who happens to be a, a spine surgeon, Rick Davis with TCO. He's the best, by the way, and trying to do everything. And he finally said, uh, "You know, nah, we got to operate on this." Here, I had compressed nerves, L four. L- they're bad, so I went in and got it done. Immediate relief. I mean, it, you know, it was to the place it was wearing me out. Mm-hmm. And I'm not yeah. saying. Severe pain, not right. like the the ribs that I had, but, but nagging, nagging. Yes. You know, you just couldn't chronic. You, you couldn't operate, and then uh, the word got around because I had it. everybody saw me. So you're walking. Around. Louis heard about it. Louis was having problems, and he called me up. So he went to see him, and he had it done. Yes, he and did. of course, Louis said, oh, "Mine was." More Compared severe. to his, mine was nothing. He, I, I only he's heard, already told us that. At, you know where he told us that? Yeah, at the fair. I was, I was, he appeared at the fair. Well, that's great. I, I was uh, Without a carry limo. Well, that's, well, you know what? Though? Hold he, on. I think he got a ride, and he was appearing on behalf of somebody uh, specifically. We oh, need don't to, ruin oh, the bit. Really? No, we need to be fair. I'm going to be oh, fair really? to Mace, yeah. at least on day one. Is that, is that, yeah, that is exactly The fair right. is where you buy a pig in yeah, August. That's it. Uh, you got that? that You've too. been listening. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so, I would have come. So I'm disappointed I wasn't invited. So, you are. I, you, know what, you, know, you guys don't really uh, embrace the word of 
Team. We don't? T-E-A-M. I thought we were a team. We were just talking about that earlier. Uh, I team. said I said you were the ultimate non-team player. That's what I said, and which is ironic given you were a football coach. Yeah, that's right. All right, come on. So, new lease on life. You feel better than oh, ever. Yeah. I really, it's it's made a big change. I'm a I'm a I'm a hundred percent better. That's great, but I'm not a hundred percent. That yeah, makes any sense. It you know, does. Yeah. I am, well, you're old. I'm smart. I'm, thank you. So am I. I'm not I, ripping I'm, you. I'm, you I'm we really, are. We are. I, I'm really taking it cautious because I don't want to go back to no, where I was. You know, don't so be, don't I'm, be I'm reckless. I'm walking. I'm not running. I haven't played any golf. I'm. I'm really being cautious. All you have to do is just. You don't have to run. No, you just I know. Walk. Just yeah. keep active. Right. You know, you know what I find out? What's that about? You talk to a lot more people when you just walk. <laughs> well, that's true. You know, I mean, I'm a man of the Are people. You, so you know where that. do you hold court now, downtown oh, Wyzetta? Man, this, is, this is amazing. You know, Wyzetta, for a great town that it is, yeah. there is no coffee shops. Yeah, there is. Where? Starbucks, right, right no, close down by the, by the Buns, Lunds and Buckerleys. Where? Well, it's not downtown Wyzetta, unfortunately. No. But yeah. no, I'm th- the Starbucks is gone. Caribou's gone. We used to sit at, uh, well, that's inside, which wasn't. That's gone. Uh, that got ev- evicted. Yeah. Uh, you've got grocer's table, but they don't open to 8. What that's, kind of coffee shop no. doesn't open to 8 o'clock? That's way too so, late. That's absurd. So now, you find me right now when the weather's good, I, I sit out, outside on the sidewalk at Crisp and Green. Really? That's where I sit. But yeah. there's, so where do you get the coffee? They they sell coffee. Oh, they do. And green. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, how what time do they open? They're open and must open at seven because okay. we're there. I I go to. The, I've never heard of a coffee place that opens at. Did you say eight or nine? They don't. Open, uh, they eight o'clock. I think. Yeah. Now that's it's crazy. That's nuts. And then, well, we said before you should open one. And then when I do, I have a routine because I go about quarter after six in the morning, right? Uh, with my dog, and I got a little group. I'm the commissioner. <laughs> Head coach, of and, course. No oh, yeah. Yeah. And and the entertainment, by the way. And <laughs> sometimes there's 10 people with their dogs. Right. And then a, then a couple of us go down to uh, Christmas Game. But on Saturdays, I take my dog out to Lake Minnewashta. You know what uh, Yes, I do. That's out near I, all, you know, wherever. Well, where I used to be. Yeah. It used to be. Yeah. And I go out there, and uh, there's a group of five or six people, and we... Uh, oh. Walk through the trails and stuff. Nice spot. Yeah. And then we go to Excelsior to Red Bench and sit outside with our dogs. Great spot, too. Call, uh, it is at, you know, if YZ needs one thing, they need a Red Bench. It's I, fabulous. And, and uh, Joe, the cook there, I mean, he and I are tight. He's tight. The, he's the best. The people work there are great. We sit outside. It's nice with the dogs. People are friendly. It's great. I am surprised that by now, because you've been out of coaching now, what is it 15 years? This is my. 18th year 18th out. 18th year out. Yeah. That you have not lent your name to somebody to like for a coffee shop or something like that. Yeah. I mean, just because you're tailor made for it and you could be, like I said, you could be the greeter. I'd be the greeter. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Because you like doing that anyway. You're yeah. a people person, Mace. Well, Who you, knew? Well, you, oh, we talked about it joking around my guys. You know, I had a nickname for all the guys. I got, yeah. you know, I got Freddie the free letter. I got Barry the vest and I got Peter the pumpkin eater. And I said, we ought to open a coffee shop. And I said, we'd all have a role. I would be the greeter. Yeah. Okay. Be good at that. Barry the best. He'd make the coffee. Right. Uh, Freddie the freeloader. He's in the, uh, he'd clean up business. Anyway, he'd be the janitor. And and then we had uh, uh, Peter. He was going to do curbside delivery. Uh-huh. It'd be any, pretty good. Any women in your entourage? No. Uh-uh. What's that all about? No, no. You, you've always been a ladies' man, Mace. What uh, the hell? Well, I don't know. It's uh <laughs> We've we, we've had some we've had some female types that have been uh, coffee people on the fringe for a while, mm-hmm. but they seem like they disappear. Really, they become <laughs> disenchanted. Let's put it that way. Is that because of you or some? No, I don't know. I don't know. I just yeah, I don't know. Well, that happens. Uh, I want to give you a, a, an out of nowhere nugget. This is from 1984. Okay, so okay. long before you came to the University yeah. of Minnesota. But I thought you'd get a kick out of this. I was a uh, well, I was at uh, Ohio State. Okay, this was uh, on this date on August 2, so earlier this month, on that date in 1984, a survey commissioned by the University of Minnesota shows that 53% of go for season ticket holders prefer football games at the Metrodome. Only 36% said they preferred games at Memorial Stadium. Are you You've not- always mocked and ridiculed the Metrodome as a college football place. And the the survey then was fans wanted the Dome. Well, that's great. You've never seemed but, to embrace it. Yeah, but, 
Did you? Well, kind of, no. Uh, no. Not really. No, you know, uh, um, it served its every, purpose. Every year when they'd have the, the survey in the Big Ten, all well, the Big Ten schools, yeah. the Metrodome was dead last, even to Northwestern. Which to, is difficult to do. To that stadium. I yeah. mean, you know, come on. And it was just a bad, I'm telling you, it, I, don't, I don't have to worry about sounding like I'm making excuses because right. I'm not. But it was a bad venue. Uh, you had to share with the Twins, the Vikings, and you were the th- you were the unwanted third component of that. I'm telling you, you had absolutely no rights. The turf was absolutely terrible. Uh, we didn't have a locker room. That uh, the lockers, I think there were 50 lockers in the in the home team locker room. When you have 115 players, now, how does that make sense? It was it was terrible. You know. What can I say? So you don't miss it? No, miss it. Um, if there, I remember Tom Mo. Um, he asked me one time. He said, "You know, uh, if there would be one thing that you really don't like about coaching at the university, one thing that you could change, what it would be?" I said, "Playing in that dome, I hate it." And I didn't realize it till I got here. It was depressing going in there. It was, it was terrible. Game first game would have started on time. No so worry about I, the weather. You know, had they had to delay the start of the game. It was Nothing terrible. worse for a college coach terrible. than have to delay you know a what? game an hour. You know where that dome should have been? Where it should have been in Gary, Indiana. <laughs> oh, that's that's where it should have been. That's cheap. Why would, you, why would you bring my hometown in? Because it would have fit right oh, in my there. God. Yeah, Gary, Indiana is a great steel city, great uh-huh. blue collar oh, town. Yeah. You know what? Very seldom. Oh, he's going to do very, the gear, you're very, do the no, house very smells seldom cheap shot again. Do aren't you? I ever show any sympathy for Dan <laughs> Barrera? For you put me through all those years when I was coaching. Uh, but when I go over that Skyway uh, from Chicago and you start going to Indiana and you see Gary Indiana to the left, and I think that poor guy had to grow up there. Now I understand the way he is. I understand why you're demented. I, I can tell you that. I suppose. <laughs> In your face. I suppose. Oh, by the way, well, we'll save it because I do want to talk later with you about the game itself. Um, I predicted with Garzi, or maybe it wasn't, maybe it was with Brett Blakemore, that you, because in the end, you're always a coach and always anti media, you're going to defend the approach that Deion Sanders has taken with the, with the media. That's what I predicted. I predicted that like, yeah, he's going to uh-huh. be on Dion's side when I think De- Dion's being a jackass through this whole thing. I'm not defending it one bit. You're not? No. Oh. No, I'm I, shocked. No, I blame me. If I could put up with you and Royce, <laughs> he can put up with that guy out there, whoever it is. No, you, Denver Post? You can't. I mean, it, uh, it, it, it goes with the job, so to speak. And, uh, you know, it's you know one of the things I thought was artful, you look at some guys that handle the press mm-hmm. rail. I don't know if you saw Scotty Scheffler and he won the, the big deal. And the, one of the first questions after it was over asked him, because he shanked the ball out of the trap. And the reporter says, why did you shank the ball? You know, I mean, and I, I mean, and the thing, he was great. He kind of looked at the guy and he wanted to say, that might be the dumbest question. But he, he explained to him in detail how a golfer my shanks a ball. Shank a ball. Yeah. And I'm sure that guy thought, why did I ask that question? Yeah. You know? Well, here's what's weird to me about the Sanders thing is for the first four months he's in the job, he's getting nothing but probably over the top praise, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it got, I think, a little insane basically, basically saying he walked in and he's. Gonna re, he's going to rewrite football history. Well, when he beat TCU, that was it. Yeah. They were ready to rename yes. the exactly. Brian Award. He's going to get yeah. yeah. He's going to get a, a statue in Boulder, and that's what's funny about this. It's like Dion didn't seem to mind all that acclaim then. He seemed to accept all of it then, and now he's getting a little bit of a pushback. It just I don't know. I just think it's a bad look, and that doesn't mean he can't fire back. Doesn't mean he can't you can't joust, which you often did. But the approach he's taking, like he's this martyr, I, I, I just, it, it's, it's exhausting. Well, I, th- I think he gets a lot more leeway than any other coach. Yeah, you're right. You know, I remember even a year ago when someone said something to him and he goes, if you remember this, he says, do you think I care what you think? Do you think I care what anybody thinks? Well, that might be true. But I just imagine if me or someone like that in our heyday would have done that, oh, my God. Yeah. I, but that, I, I might have ripped you. 
Are you he says something me? like that. I might have. Uh, I don't know. Royce might have. Yeah. I know it's possible. You guys were just dandies, I'll tell you. Yeah, we were. Yeah. yeah. And he's never going to retire, by the way. Who's that? Royce. He's never going to retire. Yeah. I told him we, we, he, we had him out. He came to the fair <laughs> without Kerry Limo. <laughs> He came to the very, he made it. He, he's taking another shot now? Well, no, I'm just, I mean, that's just facts. Yeah, he wrote fact out, and fiction. He wrote out there with Louie. Well, no, but he, I think he actually did get on the uh, KSTP bus probably. Oh, so you, might have a little oh, you have a bus? There. Oh, yeah. the, the KST, oh, they yeah. have a bus. Yeah, they have a bus. Yeah. Oh, they have big time. Yeah. Even Chip Scoggins takes the bus and he didn't work with him. Yeah, well. Uh, I probably let out the secret. Uh, maybe that's I'll probably call, you bad. know what, I'll call Ricey next year. I'll get a ride out with him. What I do want to do be is, embarrassing for you guys. Uh, it probably would, actually. Um, I want to talk about the game itself, the uh, Gopher opener. I think we're the only Big Ten team to lose. I think you're right. Right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Confirmed. That is confirmed. But I'll say this in defense of the Gophers, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, to the place where you used to get after me all the time. For your soft schedule. Okay, uh, no, wait a minute. Schedule? Now, if, let's just say my alma mater, the Ohio State University. How can you pound your chest that you won? You played Akron, the Zips. You know, at least the Gophers played a legitimate team. They, they played North Carolina. And you look at the majority of schools, who they opened up with, and they played against schools that you would have crucified me for. Indiana had a very good victory, I think, against a good, good quality school, didn't they, Garchi? Western Illinois. Yeah. Western Illinois. Did you no, see, it wasn't did you, Western Illinois. No, That's who they played this week. Yeah. Did you see his, uh, coming off the field, his interview? No, IU guy? Yeah. What's his name? I can't even remember. I should know. It's my alma mater. Yeah, you should know that. I should know that. Everybody loves but him anyway, already. But yeah. They played uh, Florida International. Florida, Florida National. Is, Florida Inter, not Florida FAU, Florida National. They're good this year. Yeah. But anyway, they asked him, what did you think of the first game? And he laughed. Like, I told everybody, you know. Did he? I'm telling you. He really did, and I told you so? Absolutely, yeah. Man, it sounds like that's a little early to do it. All right, let's get a break in the bottom of the hour. we got some text to get to. We'll get uh, Mace's reaction to the uh, Gophers opener and get into some other college football-related issues as well and kind of catch up on, uh, I want to, because I want to know what's going on in Mace's personal life now. I want to I want to know who he's dating. Is he <laughs> is he playing the field again? Or he's got like a he, six month road trip coming up that he's going to discuss. Oh, is that yeah. right? With, oh, good. With, He'll drive everywhere but the fair with Topo. With Topo. With Topo. That's his dog. That's the dog. That's yeah. right. Uh, so all of that in the next half hour. Kessler will join in the five o'clock as well in studio. It's a three in studio guest program. Um, the fan. That wasn't me. Can't blame me for that, Mace. No, I know who it was. Believe me. <laughs> you definitely do, uh, don't you? Yeah. Does Mace have any good boat stories from the summer? I've had, You know, it's been a phenomenal year on the lake. Thank it, you so much. It, 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 I'm telling you. Yeah, I've, we'll uh, have to take yeah, your word for it. it. It really has. And really, Why don't you send us the video? The last couple weekends uh, have really been good. Um, I was going to go out, and um, one of my dog peeps, she was going out with her family, and she, oh, you're gonna go, we ought to, we ought to, you know, connect was this, up. Was this a date? No, no, no. Oh, no. Okay. And she's with her kids. And oh, okay. All right. well, and uh, she's my kid's age, by okay. the way. All right. Well, and, that never stopped you before. <laughs> just... And and then one of their friends, okay, so we had like three boats, and yeah. we were there all afternoon, oh. and it was a blast. And then last week, and uh, my daughter had some friends up from Lawrence, Kansas, who she grew up with, and they came up. And I wasn't going to go on the boat with him, but I did. And it Turned out to out. be a nice time. And we, we, it was a little windy, but it was beautiful. So we went up to Maxwell Bay and threw the anchor. And I heard some guy yelling. And, you know, normally that happens because maybe you're drifting a little bit. Mm-hmm. But we weren't. And I thought, I'm ready to say, what's your... And my son-in-law says, oh, that's Colin Brown, his buddy. So they came over and tied up. And we thought we'd be off the... I said, we'll be off the lake by 5, about 7.30 we got off. It was a blast. It, it was been a lot, a lot of fun. What do you think, Argy? Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds great. It yeah, sounds it wonderful. It sounds yeah. like he's just a, a great man of the lake. Yeah. Great boat captain. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know what? Great host. <laughs> I am. A, Apparently. You know, if we, <laughs> I would rather see the How Churchill Room, honestly. If I'm ranking our, the slights on us, I'd like to see the Churchill Room. Well, I don't even know. Not even sure it exists at this point. I've been told it does. It does. Um, how many times was Nadine Babu out on the boat with you? None this year. What? No, I think uh, my daughter invited her at least once, and she had another Too much obli- to do, another obligation. Oh, yeah. Sounds it sounds like some bitterness. Uh, let me get to no, some. No, no. You mean she turned me down? Some texts. Uh, thanks. Thank God for Mason. Your face being back. Welcome back, Glenn. Now I know it's football season. Bless. 
Um, let me get to a couple other texts that you'll probably like. Mace is so good. Um, Mace could call his coffee shop Brewsters. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Get it? You have to. Yeah. Brewsters. By the way, talking about, t- you know, I had. Are you hungry or are you starving? I, I had I had dinner with Mac Brown, who I've known forever, the coach at North yeah, Carolina. Right. Oh, you did have dinner. And, yeah, I had dinner with him a Wednesday before the game when they came to town. And just sitting around, I know he and his wife, Sally, real well. And um, I, I did not bring it up, but uh, the old Brewster's name came up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because he, he was with them, right? Yeah. A couple times. Texas, a couple That's places. That's right. You know? And some interesting it, yarns. It, it was it was kind of like, you know, <laughs> you had to re, you had to be there to see the facial expressions. Yes, you know? yes. But I he said, the where the heck is he now? Do you know where he is now? I don't actually know where he is now. Do you? I know think that? he's like Jacksonville State or something. He's no, at a smaller I don't, I don't school. Know. I don't think he's even, maybe he is. I th- I thought maybe he was at like Coastal Carolina. I don't know. You'd have to Google him in there. But I I, I was kind of surprised. And isn't what's his name at Jacks? Uh, he's at Charlotte. Charlotte. Charlotte, Charlotte, that's right. Charlotte. Yeah, now it is coming back. I mean, yeah. that guy's moved around a lot. Uh, he's, that's a bit of a come down. By the for way, him too. I'm going to take a little shot at, uh, at Rich, Rich Rod. Rich Rodriguez. Yeah, he's oh. he's at Jacksonville State, okay. or something. and he was being interviewed, and he said, "You know what?" He said, "I'd like to get on Alabama's schedule. They paid us two million dollars. What that would do to their budget? I wouldn't care if they beat our brains out. I want to say, you're not out there playing." That's what I wor- that's really the problem that I have when these ADs in schools schedule up for the mm-hmm. money. There's kids out there playing, you know, that have no business playing against that type of talent. That's a good point. It's, it's absolutely wrong. Um, here's another interesting text. Mace hangs out at Crispin Green because that's where the hot soccer moms get their salads after their morning workouts wearing the latest Lululemon yoga pants. Not not the time I'm if it, if they're coming there a little bit later, I have to hang around a little you longer. You might that's maybe you should. Are yeah. you nuts? I'm not I I think you're playing way too innocent there. I, no, I, I think I would, there's I would believe me, I would I'd take credit for that. Um I you my, know, if that was true I'd say no. <laughs> no. They're coming by there to get their salads because I'm sitting there. Are you I, not? I don't rule that out. Yeah, there's uh, no. Saul and Blaine writes, uh, yes, my favorite segment, Love Mason. Never miss it here in Omaha, formerly Woodbury. Um, this is this is from TP2K guy. Mace, has Mace, uh, Mace tried to pick up my mind with the line, have you been with a pre-transfer portal coach before? Interesting. Have you tried that line on anybody? Have you no. ever been with a pre-transfer portal coach you it, before? You think it'd work? <laughs> Apparently, hey, things has got to change. I got to apologize. I had two Mason in the face T-shirts for you guys. I was supposed to bring in. Seriously, I forgot. Well, we I did next, next week. Next, next week, fine. that'll yeah. work. Yeah. All right. So, Gophers open in disappointing fashion against Carolina. Uh, the, we didn't, Garzi. You and I talk about this. The fireworks did oh, go boy. off. Like with the cannon tends to. In fact, you go back to the worst wide left in Vikings history, which was obviously um, Gary, Gary Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. Uh, the 15 to 1 year, the cannon at I the Metrodome went off automatically, even though the kick was wide left. Go for game, kicks wide right. And the fire fireworks go anyway. Was it Cannon Man that did that? I uh, I don't know. I don't know who would do that sort of thing. Guardsy probably does. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but a very disappointing end to uh, the the ball game, as you say, a more legitimate opponent than a lot of Big Ten teams were playing. But a great opportunity to win the game. What did you make out of the? Uh, oh, you know that's one of those. Game th- one. That's one of those things when you're, you know, when you're the coach and you lose a game like that, uh, and you got a really good kicker. You know, yeah, that's he's been I, great. I, you know, and he missed the first chip shot, if you remember, and then he missed that that's, one. That was big too. And, yeah, and if you were, you know, if I'm not a better, but if you were a betting guy for that to win the game, how much money would you have put? And so now you lose the game by two points. You missed two field goals that you should have made, and it's like, are you kidding me? Because if you make either one of those. Then it's like, oh, it's a big win. You beat North Carolina in your opener, you know, and all that stuff. Uh, it just absolutely drives you crazy. Well, either way, you could say well, they didn't play great, but 
you've been there. There's a big difference between being able to go to the podium and say, well, you know, there's some stuff for us to work on. Didn't like this, didn't like that, but you know what? We won the game, right? Yeah. It, it changes everything. Yeah, I was. I, I didn't go to the game. I told you that. I, uh, I'm half embarrassed. I, I was all set to go. I was looking forward to the tailgate, the whole right. Darren Rush. Were you going to be hanging in the sky, you my lot? That's the place to be, apparently. He's I've, been there. Well, I, Sky oh, yeah. Umala, you know what? Apparently, there's a lot of making out that takes place in the Sky Umala. Have I, you ever participated I have in that? not. Oh, okay. No. Well, something everybody, to think about in the future. Everybody wants to give me a shot. I don't drink shots. Oh, uh, good but anyway, Good tip uh, on for that, the people to know. And then go to the game. But then I was looking at the weather forecast, and I I didn't want to hang the guy out. To, so I called Darren up at uh, like 1.30. I said, you know. I'm out. It might be wrong, but I'm I'm just not look good. I'm going to bow out. And then later on, he went to the game, and while he was stuck in traffic and it was pouring rain, he, he texted me and said, you made the, the right decision. Um, so then, you know, that, I, I didn't watch all the game. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of disgruntled with college football right now, with the NIL and the transfer. We'll portal. save that. And, and we'll all, save that for yeah, next segment. All the stuff. But uh, I still look at, you know, statistics. And – What's my line? Figures lie and liars figure. You got it. It's kind of misleading. So you have to only look. Did you actually way. knock on the window there? Yes, I actually knocked on the, I, on the glass. I, the two I saw notes. you dozing yeah. off there. No, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> You're either eating or dozing. I don't know. I nailed the line. Oh, wow. <laughs> so uh, and, anyway, and now a food shot too, guys. So, playing all the hits. So, amazing. Anyway, uh, first in line at but, all the press but, boxes. But I, but I looked at, which <laughs> caught me a little surprised. Yes. Uh, because early in the game, the announcers, oh, you know, one thing about, you know, uh, Minnesota, they run the ball better. And, uh, you know, and, you know, uh, uh, PJ, he's a, he's a run for, and then you let, at the end of the game, you have 78 yards rushing. Now I know they had some sacks and stuff. And their main guy was hurt. Yeah. And the main guy's hurt, but I'm saying, yeah. uh, you know, I, and, and, uh, North Carolina lost their quarterback, uh, Brand Brad Anderson, Johnson's son, kid, Brad Johnson's kid, but, uh, uh, you know, the little game, I, I wasn't really impressed with him. You know, I mean, he, I wasn't he, either. He ran the ball better than he, he did he through the f- football. But yes, not very accurate. So, uh, what did you make early? Just early impressions of Brosmer, because obviously that's a big part of the story. New quarterback. Well, you know, the the, the I can just tell you from he's a new quarterback coming in uh, to the Big Ten level. And he came from where? New Hampshire, or something? correct? Yeah. Uh, which is a step up, any way you look at it. Okay, Big time. so the first thing you have to do, you have to protect them. Okay, and there was a couple times, man, those guys up front whiffed. And then what happens with a young guy? Um, it just happens, a new guy I should say. And now he thinks, can these guys protect it all? And if you're a quarterback and you're checking that protection rather than where you're throwing the ball, it throws your confidence completely off. So, no, that's a great and point. So that was a I mean, and he's not, I don't think he's real. Doesn't look real mobile to me. No, I, I would I would agree there, but I, I was really surprised a couple. I know it was the first game, but a couple times some of those guys, they're big. Yeah. As Texas, those guys, those offensive linemen. That doesn't you know, like I always say, B I G doesn't spell good <laughs> or doesn't spell bad. It just spells big. But man, those guys went around them like nothing. You got to work that off. One more break, more with Mace. We'll get into your general feeling about college football these days in a very much a transition period in the history of the game. How about my personal life? I get me all excited about that. I thought we were going well, we, we, we to have a podcast for that. I thought we were going to have a little advertisement or something. Oh, I have no problem with going back to no, that. We, right. we have just, had plenty of good just, personal stuff. I, if it, I asked you, you didn't really answer the question really? on playing the field or are you you know, settling down no, with you, one younger you did woman? that as a tease. Oh, I did? And yes, we never, you did. Oh, and we never got back you, to it. That's right. So you're saying pay off the tease. It's, no, no, it's, it's no. what you're supposed to do you in radio. You had your opportunity. <laughs> you messed now it's up. too late. We're moving, moving on. Moving on. All right, fair enough. We'll, we'll see if we can get them back on that schedule or maybe talk more college football. Now. All right, let's find out whether Glenn Mason <clears throat> is becoming the Frank Viola of college football. And by that I mean the former great twin starter, Helped them, of course, win the World Series in in 87. Terrific pitcher in his prime. Has basically turned his back on Major League Baseball. He can't stand it. He doesn't like the direction it's gone in. He's not a big analytics guy. He thinks that's been overrated. And he's still in organized baseball, but it's minor league. He has He wants nothing to do with Major League Baseball. He does not like what it's become. 
Are you the Frank Viola yeah, college I, football I, at this point? You know, I think I am. You know, and you're talking about a guy that really owes everything, um, the opportunities and uh, to go and play college football, have your education paid for, and then make a living, a darn good living out of football, and something that I really loved. Uh, but to me, um, the powers to be, the decisions that have made with um, – with the transfer portal and NIL and the collectives, if anybody thinks that this is first and foremost good for kids, you know, it used to be you had an opportunity and you went and you you worked hard and you could get an education in most places, downplayed the NFL and all that stuff. And if you ended up with a degree, you were um, rightfully paid, you know, uh, for doing that. You earned your degree. Uh, but anybody that thinks that, uh, I don't know if this is accurate, a high State friend of mine told me that there's 11 players on the high State roster that play, make more than a million dollars. 11. 11, okay. And then you see the University of Texas, when they have a recruiting day and they bring these kids in, they have their Lamborghinis lined up. Or the quarterback um, for Georgia, and he signed an NIL deal with a private jet. So he's flying around in private jets. Is, is that what it's about? I mean, basically, this ought to be uh, NFL 2.0. That's what it is. And it's even worse because there's no collective bargaining agreement. There's no contracts. So it would be like the NFL and every team was a free – every player was an unrestricted free agent, and there was no salary cap. So now you look at it, the, uh, a school like my alma mater – High State, who had there's a reason why they won every year. You know, whoever coached at High State and didn't, you know, win big, getting in the College Football Hall of Fame, they have a lot of built-in advantage. I know. I I coached there for a long time and played. There. And now you do this and you throw all the money. Now how? Now the other schools that had less advantages that you had and don't have near the money. How is how do you have a chance? You don't have a chance. It's not, terrible. Not only do you not have a chance, uh, Guardian and I have talked about this a lot. I, we're all assuming that the Big Ten is going to expand even further, and at that point, then they are going to go to some divisions. If they don't, there are about 10 to 12, maybe even more schools that are going to be rendered utterly irrelevant in this conference, including, frankly, largely the University of Minnesota. Yeah, I agree. I don't know how you keep fans interested. <clears throat> I don't know how you... Even just the illusion of playing for something, I, I just think it's an awful look. It, it is. And you know who you, I'm going to tell you, who I blame, it's not the coaches, it's not the ADs. They, they don't make any decision. It's the presidents. The presidents are the CEOs. They can do whatever they want. And because of the money, they've been corrupted, they let this thing go. Because all this money that yeah. comes in from the TV deals, Everybody thinks that goes just to athletics. You're wrong. That goes a lot to, to the, the president's, their discretion, uh, nerdy money. And I, I just think it's, uh, to be honest with you, to a certain extent, it's, uh, it's criminal. It really is what, what's going on, and it's, it's not better. Uh, I know everybody gets excited. About it. And the thing about it is any time you let uh, – a third party getting involved in running your business. And in college athletics, that's what happened with the TV money, the shoe money, the apparel money. Uh, some teams, you you can't even tell what you, what uniform they wear. They can wear a uniform every game. Now, why is that? That's because the clothing people want to do it, and they put it in the bookstore, and somebody buys it every week. But it's, uh, it's just not right. That said, uh, did anybody impress any team impress you this first full college football week? Yeah, you know, I, again, I, I flipped the channels. I didn't watch it thoroughly like I used to, but uh, Southern Cal looked better than I th thought they would. Um, they played better defense, and they played a quality opponent. You know, everybody said, "Oh, they don't want to play LSU." Well, LSU it turned out they didn't want to play them. Their they, guy they, Brian Kelly, and they played. Uh, in Las Vegas, I guess, you know, that's good to get the gambling going again. Um, but uh, they really have talent offensively, and they played pretty darn good uh, defense. In a in a close game, it took them to the wire against a quality opponent. They uh, looked better. Uh, now, 
everybody's talking about Miami. They played Florida. Let me tell you, the swamp, they're terrible. I mean, I look now, they say they might only, you know, they might be one or two other people, UCF and somebody else. And that coach, uh, I don't really know him. He's not going to make the season. Uh, he he's not going to end the season. They they got embarrassed at home in the swamp against the team that's coming up. And the other disappointment's got to be Florida State. Big time. I mean, it, remember that coach down there? He was still whining that he didn't get in the college football playoff, you know. Um, and they lose the first two games um, to Georgia Tech, who's not been very good, and then Boston College. I love the comment by the Boston College player. He said, hey, it's a great win for us, but we go to Boston College. We got to go to class Monday. <laughs> that was a great statement. How about Notre Dame? Um, yeah, I, 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 you know, Notre Dame, um, it, it, you know, it a was nice good. Yeah, victory on the it road. Was, it was right? a, a yeah. good. Here's the other thing about the presidents, okay? Now, I've been out of coaching a long time, but, you know, we used to hel- have our feet held to the fire by graduation rates and this thing called APR rate. I don't even know what the heck that is anymore. The only time they ever bring it up, you think it's self serving. When they don't have enough teams to fill that's how the, the Gophers ball. got in, right? right? You know yeah. what I mean? Twice. So they so they go to a team that's uh, uh, doesn't have a winning record, yeah. not qualifying. They say, "Oh, where's that APR record? Let's see who we can get in there." Okay, but now, what kind of message would have been sent? You think about it. Now, the dominant team in college football the last couple of years is Georgia, right? And they're the odds-on favorite to win it again this year. Their graduation rate last year was forty-one percent. Now, how embarrassing is that? Now, you would think, what if the presidents would have said, you know, Georgia, you're really good, 41%. You're not eligible for the playoff next year. Now, that would have been... That would take guts. That, well, that's what, what should have happened, though. We're talking about intercollegiate athletics. We're not talking about the NFL. And then the other thing, you look down there, Georgia, I mean, the number of arrests that they have down there... I mean, it uh, it rivals the NFL pol- the rosters. Police you know? It's, yeah, for it's sure. crazy. Um, I heard uh, through the grapevine that you were very much inspired as a, as a coach who did in the end get dismissed. You were very impressed with the degree to which Mike Zimmer seemed to take the high road <laughs> in a recent interview no. that appeared in the Star Tribune. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I really don't know Mike. You know, I he's a he's a a ball coach, but. I wanted to say, Mike, what are you doing? I mean, that's down the road. But for him to, you know, look out the front window, not the rear view mirror, to take the shots at Spielman and the organization and the players, you know, I mean, to say, do you want to dress the team? Why would I dress them? They got me fired. I hate that. You know, come on. I I mean, I just thought that was a classless comments, period. Uh, Lastly, and I don't even know how many people are aware of this, but on Friday... Joel Maturi will be inducted into the M Club Hall of Fame. He's part of the class of 2024, and you are giving the introductory speech. I had no idea of that. I thought that was a very <laughs> that's news to me classy too. gesture by you. You know, well, speaking of taking the high road, I was very impressed yeah. when I heard that. Well, Eric Decker's going in. That's true. Uh, he's worthy of going in. <laughs> <laughs> In your face. Uh, speaking of the high but, road, Kyle. Glenn Zimmer. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. I can still remember recruiting Eric Decker. Yes. You know, and, uh, you know, he was from. Uh, uh, Recory, Cold Recori. Spring. Yeah. Cold Spring. And uh, didn't you recruit him to play a different position, though? No. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't know much about He wasn't highly recruited. So I drove up there one night uh, and uh, went to his house. Nice home visit. And I'm looking at this kid, and what I'm thinking is, um, why isn't other people recruiting this guy? You know, we're recruiting him. I'm thinking, what's wrong with this yeah. guy? You know, well, I offer him a scholarship, and he takes it. I mean, silver tongue, the whole deal, you know, I take it. I see, as soon as I get in the car, I'm driving back. I call my assistant coach, and I'm saying, what is wrong with this guy? I mean, he's like, too, why, why isn't anybody else recruiting? I said, if this guy's a dud, you're fired. I'm just telling you, I, I'm going on your recommendation. I don't know what's going on. Well, right. the next morning, I get a call from John Glardy, and he says, gosh darn you. He said, "We look, we because they were right up there. That's you right. Know? Sure. He said, he great one. And he said, I told all my guys, hide the film. <laughs> don't put them on a recruiting list. Maybe no one will find them. Don't talk about them. Don't say anything. 
and you guys come in and, and take him. And he and a awful also a good baseball player and about as good looking a guy. Yeah, he and was, now he yeah. married Jesse James, the singer. He's handsome. He can hoop too. They, they basketball. A, I used to tell him, I said, you know, you're a great football player, but get out of football. Go to Hollywood. Be an actor. Yeah. I mean, he's got those. What, what's he up to now? Do we know? He lives in Nashville, Nashville I think, yeah, okay. with his wife, who's a singer and yeah. has a career there. He's, Pretty good. He, yeah, he's, he, I think he's fine. He's not looking back at this he's point. He's doing okay. Yeah. Uh, good opening salvo, I think. Good. I even let you go long because we started a little bit long, yeah. or a little bit late. Don't let it happen. No, again. that's a rare situation <laughs> in which we have that many. I uh, do miss guests. you guys. I well, hate to we say did too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you admit, at least it, so yeah. you're, every once in a while you show a little humanity. Well, you know what happens is when, when you don't have a lot to do, <laughs> and you think about how can you be productive in your life. Yeah. If you have an opportunity to just straighten a couple of guys out that are That's misguided. Sure. Changing you, lives. You feel good about yourself. Yeah, you should. It gives you a reason yeah. to get up in the morning. Does it not? We, yeah. Garzy and I give you, think about that, a reason to get up in the morning. Who knew? But I, 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 uh, I must admit, you guys, uh, I thought for sure you'd take a shot at the Golden Bachelor again. And you're off that one. You're on the new material. For now. Side. I, I oh, commend we'll you back until the season comes it's back. It's a long season. I commend you we got that. plenty of time. Yeah. A lot of time. Uh, good to see you. Great to have Great. you back. Thank we'll you. see we you at Crispin uh, Green tomorrow morning. Dan and I will uh, meet up with I'll you. stop by. Yeah, yeah that's Come the on way by. to go. Yeah. yeah. You know who stops by uh, every once in a while? Who? An old radio person like Tom Bernard. Is that right? Yeah. Interesting. That plot thickens. Yeah. All right, uh, thanks. We'll chat next week. A uh, Top five at five will include what, Garzy? Twins, Vikings injury report, and... Are players excited in the National Football League to go to Brazil to play this Friday?